You want to know how crazy Frankie Fraser was? A little generator in the scrapyard, and he used to attach it to people's nuts and everything and electrocute them. And one, one guy tells the story where he sat and done, hit him on the head with a bayonet, and one of the crowd said, look at that, looks like a mouth opening. So he rubbed a pie in, give it something to eat. <coughs> He's a fucking lunatic. We'll give him. Frankie Fraser was born on Cornwall Road in Waterloo, London on December 13th, 1923. His mother was of Irish and Norwegian descent while his father was half Native American. Fraser was the youngest of five children and grew up in poverty. At the age of five, he moved with his family to a flat on Walworth Road, Elephant and Castle. Although his parents were not criminals, Fraser turned to crime at age 10 with his sister Eva, to whom he was pretty close. By the age of 12, he was committing robberies and breaking into hotels. He was a deserter during World War II, escaping from his barracks on several occasions. It was during the war that he first became involved in serious crime with the blackout and rationing, combined with the lack of professional policemen due to conscription, providing ample opportunities for criminal activities such as stealing from houses while the occupants were in air raid shelters. In 1941, Fraser was sent to a youth detention center for breaking into a Waterloo hosiery store and then given a 15-month prison sentence at HM Prison Wandsworth for shop breaking. It was there where he says he almost drowned a prison guard in the bathtub. He also said he was whipped several times with a cat of nine tails as a punishment. The criminal opportunities were so abundant during the war that Fraser joked in a television interview years later that he has never forgiven the Germans for surrendering. In 1942, while serving a prison sentence in H.M. Prison Chelmsworth, he came to the attention of the British Army. Although he was conscripted, Fraser later boasted that he had never once worn the uniform preferring to ignore call-up papers, desert, and resume his criminal activities. After the war, Fraser was involved in a smash-and-grab raid on a jeweler for which he received a two-year prison sentence, mostly served at H.M. Prison, Pentonville. It was during this sentence that he was first certified insane and was sent to Cane Hill Hospital before being released in 1949. During the 1950s, his main occupation was the bodyguard of the well-known gangster Billy Hill. Billy Hill and his gang had managed cash robberies and defrauded London's high society of millions at the card tables of the John Aspinall's Claremont Club. He also mentored the Cray Twins early in their criminal career. In 1953, he was involved in a riot at H.M. Prison Wandsworth and was transferred to H.M. Prison Durham. He rebelled against an officer and was severely beaten, resulting in him having to get 21 stitches in his head. During this time at Durham, Frankie was again certified insane and this time was sent to Broadmoor Hospital. Instead of being heavily medicated for his bad behavior, he stayed out of trouble and was released in 1955. The following year, the British mobster Jack Spot and his wife Rita were attacked on Hill's say-so by Fraser, Bobby Warren, and at least half a dozen other men. Both Fraser and Warren were given seven years for their acts of violence. It was in the early 1960s where Fraser first met Charlie and Eddie Richardson of the Richardson Gang, rivals to the Cray Twins. According to Fraser, it was they who helped him avoid arrest for the great train robbery by bribing a policeman. During the robbery, $2.6 million were stolen from a Royal Mail train on its way to London. Together, Fraser and the Richardson gang set up the Atlantic Machines Fruit Machine Enterprise, which acted as a front for the criminal activities of the gang. He had a rivalry with fellow gangster Eric Mason, whom he attacked with an axe. In 1966, Fraser was charged with the murder of Richard Hart, who was shot at Mr. Sips Club in Catford while other Richardson associates including Jimmy Moody, were charged with a fray. A witness changed his testimony and the charges were eventually dropped, though Fraser still received a five-year sentence for a fray. He was also tried in court in the so-called torture trial in which members of the Richardson gang were charged with burning, electrocuting, and whipping those found guilty of disloyalty by a kangaroo court. Fraser himself was accused of pulling out the teeth of victims with a pair of pliers. Following a trial at the Old Bailey in 1967, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Fraser's 42 years served in over 20 different prisons in the UK were often marked with violence. He was involved in riots and frequently fought with prison officers and fellow inmates. He also attacked eight prison governors. Fraser was one of the ringleaders of the major Parkhurst prison riot in 1969, spending the following six weeks in the prison hospital because of his injuries. Involvement in such activities often led to his sentences being extended. While in strange ways, Manchester in 1980, Fraser was allowed to not wear boots as he claimed he had problems with 
his feet because another prisoner had dropped a bucket of boiling water on them after Fraser had hit him. He was allowed to wear slippers. He was released again from prison in 1985. After his release from prison, Fraser became a minor celebrity of sorts, appearing on television shows such as Operation Good Guys, Shooting Stars, and the satirical show Brass Eye. In 1996, he played William Donaldson's Guide to Marbella in the infamous BBC Radio 4 series, A Retiring Fellow. In 1999, he appeared at the German Street Theater in a one-man show, An Evening with Mad Frankie Fraser, directed by Patrick Newley, which subsequently toured the UK. Fraser also appeared as East End crime boss Pops Den in the feature film Hard Men. Fraser gave gangland tours around London, where he highlighted infamous criminal locations such as the Blind Beggar Pub. In 1991, Fraser was shot in the head from close range in an apparent murder attempt outside the Tumbles Club in Clerkenwell, London. Part of his mouth was shot away in the incident. He refused to discuss the shooting with the police. Frazier was an Arsenal fan and his grandson Tommy Frazier is a professional footballer. Another of Frazier's grandsons, James Frazier, also spent a short time with Bristol Rovers. Another grandson, Anthony Frazier, was being sought by police in February 2011 for his alleged involvement in an alleged five million pound weed smuggling ring. Frazier's wife, by whom he had four sons, died in 1999. He was a resident of a sheltered accommodation home in Peckham. According to Eddie Richardson, Fraser had Alzheimer's disease for the last three years of his life. In June 2013, the 89-year-old Fraser was served with an antisocial behavior order by police after a row of another resident. On November 21, 2014, he fell critically ill during leg surgery at King's College Hospital and was placed in an induced coma. On November 26th, Fraser died after his family made the decision to turn off his life support machine. And there marks the journey of mad Frankie Frazier. I was just looking into all the things he did while he was, like, actually during his criminal prime. And it's just, this dude was a freaking psychopath. And I really want to look into a lot of the British gangsters, especially, like, the Cray twins and, you know, all the other, even the mobsters, like, the American ones, like, John Gotti and Sammy the Bull. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because that mafia lifestyle is like, hmm, it's interesting. To just look at from the outside because really it was ridiculous <laughs> but you know it was always crazy to look at but i hope you enjoyed this video i appreciate all the support on the channel but hope you have a great day hit that subscribe button i'm out peace